Hey guys, Dragon Ball 3000 here with my X1 Spiritual Sprite deck profile. Sprite's in an interesting situation in this format, where the Shizu tier being the best deck of the format by a long shot. The deck has to really take themselves out to like beat tiers, so with this build, I've tried to shove in as many cards as I can to sort of beat tier as it being the deck best deck of the format. So, for those of you who still want to be playing Sprite during this format, here's my take on Bistral Sprite. So to start, uh, for the Sprite package, we play 3 blue, we play 3 jet, 1 red, 1 carrot, 1 pixies. I think this the monster lineup for the Sprite cards is pretty standard. Uh, you should obviously be on 3 blue, 3 jet, 1 red and 1 carrot, those are like the best cards. It's Blues of such as you or your other engine pieces, jets such as your spell traps. Reds in the gate, carrot helps protect you from spell traps. However, Pixie's a little bit less standard, but I feel like you should still be running because Pixie provides a protection that you kind of need since all your sprite monsters are really weak. It also allows you to beat over uh, bodies that you normally wouldn't be able to out. So I feel like having just at least one Pixie's in the main is necessary. At worst case scenario, it's a level two body that you can special summon to go into a gigantic or into want to go into the sprint. So I th feel like the monster lineup for the sprite cards is pretty standard. Uh, next we have the spell traps. So I'm playing three starter, one smashes, and one double cross. Again, uh, this all looks pretty standard. Three starter because it's your one card combo, one smashes because it's an out of mystic mind and also a really good interruption. And then one double cross again, it's not as standard as I've, I've seen a lot of lists not playing it. But I feel like having one double cross in the main is really useful since it makes Data a one card triple toad, which is, I feel, extremely strong, especially because you would have four other cards in hand to use. So I feel like if you're not on double cross, at least test it out because for me, it's been it's been going really well for me. Like having it, being able to just have triple toad turn one is just insane. Then onto the other additional normal summons. So we have... The, this is the nimble package I'm playing. So I'm playing three beaver, two angler. Again, this should be pretty standard. Uh, you need to be playing on two angler uh, for a combo that I'll show later in the video. And beaver is just crazy, right? It's your one card, so it gives you two bodies and it actually gets you four bodies in the end, which is really nice because Brian is a really good card. Yeah, if you're not on angler, you should be, especially with the addition of Sprite. I know before you would be playing just beavers, but because we have Sprite now as a card, you want to be on Angler. For the other normal summons, we have two Soft Frog, and uh, I'll just add in Cap Shell here. So, obviously, for Soft Frogs, you need to be on them if you're going to be making Toad. Uh, it's your best form of interruptions. As for the reason why I'm only on two Soft Frogs, I feel it's not necessary to be on three since you're only using these to make uh, Totally Awesome, and there's no reason to be playing more than two because you just want to be summoning of Gigantic and then sending Swap Frog. You don't want to really be normal summoning this, you want to be normal summoning Beaver. Uh, as for Cap Shell, this should be probably be Hyperia, but I don't own a Hyperia at the, at the moment. Cap Shell just helps you draw cards in situations where you need to uh, just be drawing cards to try and out boards. It also is better if you're going for a Zeus line, since instead of summoning Swap Frog, you can summon Cap Shell, and that way when you're going for Zeus, you're at least drawing cards, which is really good about this. Now for the Bistuals and going second cards. So we're on... Three Magnemit, obviously, uh, three Joy Swim, and then one Saranya. I think this package is really standard, right? Um, Magnemit stops a tier name, like all of these stop a tier name. They can banish, they can target to banish and then summon themselves. And then what's great about Magnemit is that it will set you another one in the end phase. Joy Swim is also really good because its effect is that when it's sent to the graveyard, you can target a, monster, a special summon monster and send it to the graveyard, which comes up a lot because what you can do is actually chain block using Joy Swarm because if you have Joy Swarm and normal summon any level two, you can link these two off into Sprint and do chain link one Sprint, chain link two Joy Swarm, which is a nice interaction that actually came up today. They're also really big bodies and they help you deal damage and out bodies, which is a problem Sprite typically has, but these sort of help alleviate that problem. I'm only on one Sarnia because I feel like it's the worst bestial name at the moment. I don't run any copies of Lebellion or Branded Beast because it's too expensive, and I also feel like it's not worth running in this in this like sort of build of sprite tra uh bestials. For additional going second cards, I'm playing three copies of DD Crow. I mean, this is self-explanatory, right? Just if you want to be stopping tier names, you can also stop a Shizu cards. I feel like playing three DD Crow is pretty self-explanatory. You can also make an argument for playing Ghost Spell, but I like being able to 
activate multiple DD credits per turn, which is why I prefer playing DD Crow. The only disadvantage is that this is a dark, so it makes your opponent's special cards go live, which is kind of a problem sometimes, which happened today actually. We're also playing three copies of Impo. I mean, you just want to be stopping, like this stops Kick Colossus also on your turn can trade with one interruption, which is why I like it. You're mainly using this to stop Kick Colossus since it's the best way to deal with it. Does It plays around talents and other cards like that, so I like uh, Impo for that reason. I also feel like you just need to have a, be able to have a monster negate in your deck somewhere, which is why I like this card a lot. Then, for the last couple of spell cards that I'm playing, I'm playing three talents, one called by the grave, and one change of the heart. So, why I like talents so much in this list is that your opponent activates any monster effect, like Halfness, for example, they start, and like say, they say, say they hit it in TNA. They can then, uh, they make Cathilla, they search as their trap, or they search another thing, and they try to interrupt you. What you can do afterwards, provided you haven't extended this, you can either change of heart or tag the lens, steal their monster and link it off. That way you can out the body without actually having to go out, like play, do, play awkwardly to do it. And then you can also use it as a body to extend to your further plays, which helps a lot. Call by the grave, obviously self-explanatory. One off that just stops that your opponent from playing. Uh, it's again, another DD Crow during your turn. Moving on to the extra deck, I play Two elf, best link two in the game by far. One sprint, uh, you need this to combo. One dark, cause stealing your opponent's magnum is really funny. One IP, you need to play this for Avermax. One unicorn, I need, I wanted a, this should have been Serapis actually, but uh, I, I couldn't find one before the tournament started, but so I played unicorn instead. One access code, sometimes you need to deal with lots of damage and you have a lot of loose body, so this is really good to go into. And then Crusadia Avermax. So you want to use IP and Avermax to make a really hard body for Tia to out. Like this, Tia can actually not out this using Engine, which is really good about this. Moving on, we have two Gigantic. Best rank two in the game. Gets you any level two from your deck, which is crazy. Good. It's our main form of interruption and, and part of our end board. Ball sweeper. This guy is uh, really good. It outs, it outs bodies, and uh, it's a really good monster to go into Zeus for, since it helps out bodies and then attacks. One downed, one Zeus. Uh, this is Zeus's end downed. I feel it's kind of necessary since you want to be able to out the whole board sometimes. And when you're under D shifter, using Zeus isn't actually a problem when you're versing tier. Then for the last card on the extra deck, I'm playing one Wallow. This card is extremely good. For those of you who don't know what it does, it requires two level six monsters. Uh, all monsters you control gain 100 attack and defense for each card in your opponent's graveyard. And then you can target uh, one card in your opponent's graveyard and detach materials according to which effect you want to do. So if you detach one material, you can return it to the deck so it stops the tier name. Or if you return two, you can set that card to your side of the field. So essentially this is two, um, two, uh, like an additional way to stop tier name from resolving, which is really good. And you can just use this by putting any two level sixes, which is all, which is why where all the visual cards are. This is also why Talents and Change of Heart and Dark is really good because you can steal your opponent's visual monsters, then use them to exceed into this, giving you more interrupt. Moving onto the side deck, all of it's pretty self-explanatory. We play one Scythe and three Sanctum, just guarantees the win. We play three Lightning Storm, for back row decks and for Flunder since they have to summon all their monsters of attack position so you can just wipe the entire field. We then play one Dragon Stapella, one Mud Dragon and then three Supali. So this is probably the most like unique thing in my side deck. I really uh, don't like Versing Tier and I find Super Poly just outs the entire board without thinking too much. This Dragon Stapella should have been a Garura but I couldn't find one before the tournament started so I played Dragon Stapella. It did actually end up coming up and it actually lost me the only match I lost, so uh, the only thing that would be switched out is Dragon Stapella for Garura. But Dragon Stapella is still really strong since you can just fuse your opponent's fusion monster plus any dark, so like Collider Heart and any dark on the field. Use them for Dragon Stapella. If they trigger their tier name and graveyard, you can use Dragon Stapella to negate something, which is why it's decent. Mud Dragon is also really good since it protects your sprite monsters from targeting protection. So you can summon Mud Dragon. Or dark, and then any sprite stuff you summon from that one will be guaranteed to resolve since they can't target it. They only have to use Ash, and in that case, if they're playing Ash, you should have won because that deck is bad. Then moving on, 
we play one uh, one red resonator for time since time rules suck and you need to have a wink on in time and you're summoning this gigantic to gain 16 or 3200 life points and then lastly three dish shifter because we just want to win against Tia and D shifter isn't bad in uh, sprite since if you're going second and you, you started in D shifter you can D shifter your opponent and then when you de-shifted them, just go for a Zeus play and then all their cards will get banished or wipe the entire field by banishing it. Which is why I really like de-shifter. It's not even, like, even if you top deck de-shifter, it isn't bad because, as long as it didn't mill any Yashizus because then you can just de-shift on your turn, go for a Zeus play, banish the entire field and then have Zeus on their turn under de-shifter, meaning that uh, if they do try to continue playing, you'll be able to wipe the board again, which is why de-shifter is really nice. Apart from that, that's pretty much it for the side deck. Now I'll move on to just a few basic combos that you should know. The first combo I'm going to show you guys is what you can do with just one starter. So what you, your usual envoy consists of double toad negate, but with just one starter we can get to triple toad negate provided we're on double cross. So we'll activate the starter, starter will summon blue, we'll take 1100 points of damage and then trigger blue effect. We'll then use blue effect to summon search jet and then summon jet. We'll do jet effect to search double cross and then link these two off for our copy of sprite. We'll use Sprite Effect, Dumpling, Angler. Use Angler Effect to summon a Beaver and another Beaver. We'll then Xyz into Gigantic and then use Gigantic Effect, detaching a Beaver, summoning out a copy of Swap Frog. We'll then use Swap Frog Effect, dumping another copy of Swap Frog. Link these two off into a copy of Elf. Use Elf Effect, target the copy of Swap Frog that we dumped into the graveyard, summoning it out. Exceeds into totally awesome, and then we set double cross, giving us three toad negates. Also, when you use toad uh, and send to the graveyard, you'll be able to add back a copy of Beaver to your hand, giving you follow up. And if you use toad toad multiple times, you can then also add back copies of Swap Frog or and Anglers if you want to. The reason we have triple toad negate is that because double cross lets you target a card in either player's graveyard, and then one of the effects. And one of the effects can special summon the targeted monster from the graveyard uh, to a zone a link to monster points to. So we can then use double cross to target our own toad to summon from the graveyard to and the zone elf points to. This is the most basic and simple combo for sp sprite. So that's it for the sprite deck profile. If you enjoyed, like and subscribe and comment below what you want to see next. Anyways, have a good day.